Hello, I'm Kaya Hurst Carney and welcome to this little session about vocals. Um, so we are going to talk about warm-ups and exercising your voice and build some power and stamina and accuracy in your voice. Uh, and I've got two second year vocalists with me. I'll let them introduce themselves and maybe talk a little bit more about what warm-ups, what's important in warming up your voice. Hi, my name is Tristan. I'm on the second uh, year vocals. And I've also been doing the diploma uh, the year before. Um, it has been a great time so far at ACM. I've been doing so many things and learning loads about vocal technique, vocal performance and how to move on stage. And it's been a great experience. Um, Warm-ups are important to me because I think it's not only a physical thing to get ready for p performance but also like a mental thing so to be actually like mentally ready for singing is something so important because like when i first went on stage i always had like struggles with like performing like in front of like many people because it was just like a different feeling and i was like sometimes getting nervous and like facing stage fright and um sort of like almost kind of kept me ready and they also give me security and therefore, I think they're like a very important thing to do before you go up on stage or you just actually like start your day. It's a great, that's a great point. So by telling your, by preparing your voice, you feel like this is something you know what, yeah. what you're doing. It's a routine thing. Yeah, really good point. And you? Hi, my name's Jana. Um, I'm studying um, my second year degree vocals um, after doing my diploma in Liverpool. Um, I like warm-ups because... Um, I can rely on my voice um, when I go on stage. I know that when I've warmed up, I feel more confident, like Tristan said. Um, and also as well, um, after having a few tutorials with the great tutors here, um, like I learned how to change words that I was struggling to sing, um, change the vowels and even just thinking about um, using dopia vowels like that I wouldn't have even thought of doing myself in practice made it easier to sing when I actually came to do the performance and um, so it's just getting all that in your head and training your muscles that's yeah. really good for yes me. in your head and in your body it's basically making sure that your body is prepared to doing the work that you want to do getting the sounds that you want out of um, out of you the sound that's either appropriate for the artistry that you've decided to approach or, or also what the musical director or sometimes the assessment require. So, uh, and it, warm ups are important for me uh, because it means that the students get to keep on doing gigs and they don't have to cancel or, or feel upset and about voice loss and all that kind of stuff because you can kind of ride on your technique. And, and you'll have the chance to ask questions to both of these guys afterwards and of course myself. So the main reason for this workshop is to give you guys something to work on um, before you're joining us here in September uh, in regards to warming up your voices and exercising your voice. So the voice is complex and simple in the same, at the same time. You have three most important components and some of you will have heard of this because any acoustic instruments have these three components. There's a power, a source and a filter. And we're not going to go into the real itsy gritsy science of this. You got enough of that when you get here. Um, we're not going to talk about you. Some of you might have heard of formants and harmonics and, and muscles and anatomy. We're going to talk about the really practical stuff. So the difference between coming to a vocal coach versus just kind of singing by yourself is it kind of the same with exercise. You could go to an exercise class um, and it will be one size fits for everyone but if my goal was to lose weight and your go goal was to bulk up then essentially we wouldn't be doing the same exercises so the same thing with the voice we all have slightly different exercises to make our voice do the best because essentially this is muscles and ligaments so if it in power source filter acoustics if i this was a real piano it's not it's a digital but if i place my finger on here my finger is kind of the power, the source would come by the piano key hitting the string and then the filter would be the body of the instrument. For us as singers, the power comes from the lungs. Vocal folds, which is situated inside um, your Adam's apple, Eve's apple if you want, uh, inside your voice box and it vibrates at the pitch. And that pitch is then 
amplified, if you want, or it, it, it basically gains more resonance from the vocal tract. What that means is that from this area until it comes out, that changes the sound. Down there, it doesn't sound like much. It's just like a kind of which has sold no records ever. So what we need to do is balance out this power, this source, so the airflow with the vocal fold vibration. And the best way of doing that is doing something called semi-occluded vocal tract exercises. Okay, I said I wasn't going to get too technical, but it's an important, very, very effective thing. It basically is the difference between making you hit all the notes that you want to hit in the volume and power and sound that you want to hit and not. So that's pretty important. So essentially, there's different ways we can do this. One of them is by balancing out through this semi-occluded vo vocal tract exercises. And it's creating some resistance between the airflow and the vocal fold and before it comes out. So we're kind of bypassing the resonance bit, which is a, has different challenges to it, and we'll get to later on. Um, one of them you might have done, you might have done several of these if you've uh, gone to singing lessons or seen other people doing the vocal exercises. One of them is basically by making your lip trill or lip roll, it goes like this. And yes, some of this is silly. I'll explain why. It goes like this. So we have to make sure that the two muscles, well, there's loads of muscles involved, but the two most important muscle groups, the ones that bring the vocal folds together, because if I try and sing and don't have my vocal folds together, it'll sound a bit like this. It's just breath. Again, not really great for doing fantastic performances. The vocal folds need to be together. So to know what the vocal folds together, you could do a little bit of a kind of uh-oh, which is like a glottal uh-oh. So if you all want to try that, do you want to uh, experiment with me? So we're going to go one, two, three, uh-oh. Uh -oh. And what happens then is the vocal folds come together before the air flows. You have the ah, uh, you hear a bit of ah, uh, ah, uh, that's a glottal onset. And then the opposite of that is if the air comes first and then the vocal folds come together. So you've got this thing coming on. So the air comes first and then the vocal folds come together. Horses for courses. The most balanced is when the two come together at the same time and you have a simultaneous onset, which is a, a, a kind of balanced onset. Onset is just the way you attack the note. It's just a slightly more technical way of saying it. So you've got a... Uh, all three can be useful. In pop or CCM, uh, which is the commercial music in general, um, contemporary commercial music, CCM, you might have heard that expression. Um, you might want to go... R-E-S-P-E-C-T so you got the vocal folds coming in first, or you might do it and go hoo hoo, where you got the air coming through first, or you might want, might want to do the last one. So this balancing out means that you have the opportunity to do all of that at different uh, levels of dynamic. Right, any questions about that? Just ask us afterwards in the Q and A. So we're gonna do. <laughs> making sure that both those muscles are working. And first we're going to just check that we have the uh, muscles that brings our vocal fold together by going, mmm, mmm, like, ooh, that's really good ice cream. So one, two, three, mmm, mmm. Mm. Great, and then we're going to lift up the skin around the lips like this. So we're not pushing forward, because that's just making it harder. We're just lifting up like this and going, <laughs> like you're doing a sigh. Also great entertainment with younger family members, but that's a different story. So now we're going to try and do that going up and down the register, up and down our range, uh, without losing the connection and keeping the lips fluttering. So it goes like this. You can hear a little bit of a, oh, I haven't warmed up yet. So what we might want to do there is add a bit of a cry. So you've got the... We're going to start and just go up and down and everybody's different here remember just with the personal trainer and the big gym class it's not going to be the same for everyone but you know your own voice and you can feel it and you might want to kind of stretch out other things and make sure that that your lungs are working and and, and that you're not restraining anything else so you might want to do a little bit of stretches before you even start this so lift up and just up and down the register as you feel 
You can do little slides up and down. If you feel a bit tense, you could start on top. You can start quieter or louder. But again, you wouldn't start a dance class by doing high kicks. You'd start with the stretches. It's the same with your voice. You want to start gradually, making sure you're not pushing yourself until you're completely warm. Um, there's loads of other semi-occluded exercises or resistance exercises. Um, you might have heard of the straw. Check it out. Um, you can look at this really good video by one of the kind of main people behind Vocology, uh, which is the learning about how the voice works and voice science is called Ingo Tietze. You can check that out. He's got a, 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 um, a video explaining how the straw works. So the straw essentially, if you don't have one at home, I'm going to show you uh, an alternative afterwards. But if you put your hand in front of uh, in front of you and just blow through the straw, feel free to join me on this one. So you just got just the air first. Remember, airflow is one of the three components. So then you're going to just gradually add the note back in and just start somewhere comfortable. It doesn't matter whether you're on the same note as us because everybody's different. I'm going to almost like if we have a car that doesn't quite start. So like... Try and do that a few times. And then you could become a racing car and start uh, going up and down like this. You get the drift. <laughs> so yeah, start with being in the car that doesn't work. I'm going to keep you guys on the straw while I'll do the uh, alternative in case you don't have the straw back home. So we're going to do a and it's kind of using the lips and the teeth as your resistance. So you will shape your mouth as if you're going to say like, ooh, like you, ooh, I'm not sure about this. But then you put your teeth together as resistance. So you got, <laughs> so you got, <laughs> so we'll start as the car that's broken and then we suddenly turn into a racing car. It's a very exciting story. So <laughs> go for it. <laughs> When you get up you can just go back down again so that creates some uh, acoustic energy that's happening that basically makes you sing more bucks kind of more bang for the bucks more uh, energy for less effort and that's kind of we wanted we want effort but we don't want tension we want to make sure that you're engaged and you're engaging all these different uh, components as i said which is your airflow and your vocal folds in the right kind of vibrations. They, they vibrate as the air comes up. And then the final bit is your vocal tract. Um, we're going to do a few more of these on the straw or on the, uh, this time around, just do kind of up and down. You might want to do a few scales. You might want to go. That's just a, a root fifth root octave root. But don't worry about exactly what you do. You might just want to slide or, or go over um, your song. You could, while you're practicing your guitar a bit, you can always just add a little bit of woof in there as well. So yeah, each to whatever you feel like your voice needs today. But some of you will help doing some cry kind of <laughs> to bring the vocal force together. Some of you, it might be, just make sure that you're not going to just oh, and it's too tight. I said it would be fun with the younger family members. So you could go on with this for another kind of five, ten minutes. Um, it's the most kind of effective way of warming up that power and the source of your vocal tract. So. Then we got another thing, and is how is this going to sound? Because you never go on stage and go, here's one I've prepared for you. 
So <laughs> we do have to move on to something that is closer to singing. And what we do is that every consonant and every vowel helps the voice or hinders the voice depending on what you do currently. So some of them makes it more like chest voicey and some of them might make it sound more like head voice, but we'll talk more about this when you get there. Uh, so essentially, vowels and consonant helps us regulate the airflow and it helps us regulate what kind of tone and timbre, the sound of our voice that we want. The final bit there is the, where we have our larynx. So you could have your larynx really low and it, it makes a bigger space. So you boost these lower frequencies. Or I can have my larynx really high and it boosts these higher frequencies, which again, um, it just depends what sound you're looking for. You might not want look, uh, you may not want to be looking for this sound. However, this kind of sound might not be too appropriate, uh, too inappropriate for some sounds. So now we just want to make sure that the larynx is um, is mobile because the larynx is mobile, but they don't just go up and down depending on the note we sing, because there are no high notes and low notes. It's only fast vibrations and slow vibrations and the larynx position is only partly involved in actually making the sound. So what we're going to do is just go for a big stretch and go, oh, it might feel like a yawn and you probably want to yawn after you've done it as well. So you guys ready? Just a big kind of over the top dramatic, oh, oh, just wherever it's comfortable in your range. And you can feel the larynx going up by going wee. <laughs> so if you hold here, your larynx is, as I said, it's, it's your Adam's apple. If you hold here and swallow, you'll feel the larynx come up and then settle back down again. And where it exactly settles and where it starts depends on your, your, your body. So don't worry too much where it is. Just be aware of it and then try again. So the little swallow. And then if you go duh. 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 And then, whee! Whee! <laughs> you can feel these extremes positions. So, um, as we do in the next one, we're going to start one with the lower position. We're going to go goo, goo, goo. And we're going to do it on a, on a arpeggio. So, um, female and male voices aren't the same. I just went female and male, pardon. <laughs> female and male voices aren't the same. Um, you probably knew that already. But, that makes it a little bit hard to warm up together because we're not an octave apart either. Some of you might be singing together with somebody from the opposite sex might have noticed that it's a little bit hard. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to find somewhere in the between for this one. If I was doing a one-to-one -one session, we would find out exactly where your voice is and later on we will be working a little bit more independently. But just so you're aware that something, we're about a fourth and a fifth away rather than an octave away. If you don't know what that means, don't worry. That's part of what we're teaching you. So it just means that we're not quite as far away that we're able to sing at the same time in the same key for all the notes. That's OK. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to be here. I think that should um, where I am um, actually. So we're going to do that on an arpeggio and we're going to do it on the so I'm now playing your octave. This will be the female octave. So we're going to go. So you've gone for the lower octave, but that's fine. You, when you feel comfortable coming back up, just join me on this one. Really use your G there at the bottom. Good. And then we're going to kind of do the opposite. So that, that was with the larynx a little bit lower. We're going to go, nay, 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 n
makes that sound really nasty. Like, you know when you're in the playground and you just, like, na 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 It's kind of like that. So we're going to go for a... Nay, 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 Excellent. And now we're going to try a bit more neutral. So what you might want to do is just shake it out a bit, like... Um, and here, I will start in a comfortable key for you, and then you're going to join when you feel like this is... Uh, there's not so much point in, in practicing lower than what you can sing, because we can actually practice to learn how to sing higher, but to learn how to sing lower only depends on how much your vocal fold almost like a guitar string, how much you can maintain tension as you go really low. So there's a point if you've ever tried to pluck a guitar string where it just doesn't vibrate enough to create a tone. Mm -hmm. There's a point when you go, oh, you can't get any energy down there, so track your sound. Um, so you might want to try and pra start practice, which is you can make the lowest bit of your voice sound more usable, but you can't really build your voice too far down, basically. So. I'm going to start with yourself. What do you feel is the best kind of exercise for you? You've been doing quite a few tutorials. It's mm. <sighs> a good question. Like, I think it depends like what my voice is doing on the day. So like, it's always like on like if it's feeling heavy or if I'm feeling too light, if I need a bit more consonants or like less air more airflow. It depends. Um, I like I actually quite like woof, for instance, because woof. because it's just kind of is nice to have a stable. Um, Larynx. You feel it helps kind of stabilize yeah. things. Yeah. So it's one that you l like to use early in a, in a warm up or later yeah. on? Earlier. I mean, like after, obviously, after the, the straw and after the v, for instance. Yeah, so we talked about how each vowel and consonant had a little bit of different properties and could help us with different things. And it's a really good point that Tristan raises of your voice is not going to be the same every day. You know, it, you pick up your guitar, it's pretty much going to feel similar every day. But the voice does depend on how much water you've drunk, if you've had enough sleep, whether you're stressed, all this kind of stuff. And vocal health is a massive part of taking care of your voice. So the woof is one that you feel like gets your voice going on an average day. It's, it's, a, it's a reliable something. So the woo helps it bring the, the, it forward into the mouth space, which is one of the main two kind of chambers. This obviously, I, I usually say that when it comes to vocal technique, you've got the, it's a bit like in maths, you've got pi is 3.14, but actually when you learn more, it's an indefinite number. Vocal technique is kind of the same. You could start looking at spectrograms and you could start learning uh, all about what each vowel has in booster frequencies. And if you're now going, ah, I don't know what's going on, you don't have to. That's what training is for, right? Oh, and some of you might not even be interested in that side of things. And some of you are, I think you're more into the voice science than, than you are. You're, you just want your voice to work. Yeah. You want your voice to do exactly what you want. And, you know, similarly, you have some of the artists on the, the creative artist route who they just want to make sure that when they sing that note, it sounds like what it does in their head. And then you have some people who want to find out, yeah, but why? You might be that or you might be that. That doesn't matter. But essentially, it's so much more than that, OK, you just have to do this, and then the voice works. The more I teach, the less I believe in talent, the more I believe in the combination of everything you put into it. So woof is actually a really good choice for people who might want to feel like they need to take a bit of pressure off if they might either be putting in a little bit too much muscle or a little bit too much airflow. So you got the oo, and then you got the f. And if we're looking at regulating airflow, some consonants stop the airflow, and some consonant releases air. So you can probably guess which one f is. So if you go oo, it releases a lot of air. It's pretty much a vowel. It's a woof, but you could say that it's a w. It's a bit of a funny one. So we put an oo in between just to make sure the joy is, joy is dropped because then we get more space in this space. So starting here uh, we're going to try a double arpeggio and then down on the dominant scale in between. Don't worry if you don't know the theory behind that. It's essentially just this melody. And if I um, demonstrate that in my range first 
We wonder. Woof, 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 woof. Try and keep this going. Woof, 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 woof. Woof, 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 woof. Woof, 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 woof. Down a little bit. Woof, 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 woof. So what we're looking for here is we're looking for balance between the lower part of our range and the higher part of our range. And I know that that's something that you're particularly interested in working on, so that the top part of the range sounds a little bit more like the bottom part of the range. So um, we're going to try and actually add a few more repetitions on top. So we're building even more muscle memory in there to make it feel more um, natural so essentially it's it's called automating the technique we're going in so it becomes natural eventually um, and we're going to do this one woof 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 so three extra on the top good and then we get a little bit more um, kind of muscle memory build up there. So this time around, we're going to see if we can bring. Build. So woof again doesn't sound fully like singing. It sounds a bit airy. So we're going to add a b in there and see if we can maintain that. So we're going to go. That's a bit too low for me. <laughs> you do it. So it's a little bit more challenging, yeah. but it's still going so well. It feels good. Yeah. It feels nice. So see if we can now remove that. Okay. So we might need to do this a few more times before we can challenge it more. Um, but you know, I'll have demonstrated my range this time around. So instead of boof boof boof, we're gonna go bo 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 bo. So the the challenge being to keep it balanced throughout. So bo 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 bo. I was really good on the way down. Could you see a little thing on the way up that his eyebrows went? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a little secret, the eyebrows aren't actually directly connected to the larynx. So if they're going up, it's a usually a good sign for us vocal coaches that the larynx is stretching. That's a little bit of extra kind of thinking up there. Uh, yeah, so instead, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to, to put your hand like this and, and let, you put your hand down as you go up. It's kind of tricking your brain a bit. I like to trick brains if it's for good cause. Okay. So that was a lot more balanced. We didn't get the pull then, but then it was a little bit too light maybe if we were looking for a bit more power. So what I say now is let's open that vowel up. So we're going to go for a... Uh, bow. So you're going to go for a Good. Can you now add it up with a little bit of cry? So cry, like kind of <laughs> can help the vocal force together if we sometimes get a little bit into the um, the more uh, airiness of the voice. So we're gonna try one last one of that. That feel better. Better. So I felt like really like more compression. More compression. So compression is like how much the vocal folds together. So it sounds more like when you're speaking, really. So that can help with building more power into the voice. So the, that is quite related to what you want to work on later on as yeah. well. So 
we've kind of warmed your voice up more. Mm -hmm. Let's see, what is it that you want to work with your voice? So you were saying about learning a riff in class today? Yes. Do you yeah. want to say more about that to these um, guys? I always found it struggle to riff. Um, and what do you mean by riff? Um, like a... Like an ad lib, like a, something that is like fast? No notes, notes that go down in, um, you know, semitones and things. Um, when it's really quick, I really struggle to get the accuracy. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a housemate that's really good at it and it makes me feel a bit bad. I need to sort of at least be good at it a little bit. That's my goal. And it's always good to want to improve yourself, but at the same time, you have to remember that everybody's got different strengths. So you might have a housemate who's like fantastic at, at all the kind of riffing, which is a really fast notes in between loads of different notes, but he or she might not be as strong at singing in the belt equality that I know that you kind of enjoy, you know? So we all have strengths and weaknesses and it's important to change our weaknesses, but it's also really important that we work on our strengths. So that aside, let's work on that weakness. So do you know what the riff is? Um, it's black gold. Uh, so it's like, um, hold your head as high as you can. Can. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Okay, so it's just coordination really when it comes to riffing and the kind of more faster um, things. It's coordination because you are moving your muscles and your ligaments faster. So what do we normally do when we learn anything else in life? We kind of break it down. You wouldn't learn a full dance by learning it at full tempo with all the steps if it's the first time you're learning a dance move. So with singing, sometimes we forget that if you haven't done it before, that's why it's hard. So we need to, to condition the muscles and ligaments to be able to do it. So we know now that it's can. So the first time we do it, we, it doesn't have to be pretty, it doesn't have to be, it has to be accurate on the note, but it doesn't have to be accurate in regards to style and all that kind of stuff. Because if you got the notes right and there's no lack of tension, then actually the style and that kind of stuff is probably one of the easier things to get right. So just give me that on, can you give me on a really whiny wah, 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 wah. And you're 100% sure they're the notes you want? Yeah. Perfect. So wah, 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 wah. Good. At that top one, it's a, you're coming up towards it. Can you instead go straight onto it? Wah, 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 wah. Wah 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 Can 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 good. So now, uh, could you hear that it's getting slightly less as you get faster? It's getting slightly less yeah. Uh, accurate. Yeah. Okay. So it's partly because you're trying to reach for the notes. So trust that. What did you hear that it was perfect when you did that? Wah 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 wah. Yeah. So try one more time on that. Wah 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 wah. Ka 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 ka. Ka 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 ka. Great. The only difference now is whether we have the smooth transition between. Okay. So let's try it again. Ka 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 ka. Ka 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 ka. Wa 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 ka 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 ka. Wa 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 ka 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 ka. Can. Can. Now the voice was there. You yeah. hear that? It's a little bit slower than what you want, but it was all correct. Okay. Good job. One more time. Can. 
can. Can. Nice. Two, three, four. Can. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Good. So it's getting there. So it's just like with anything that you're learning new. When I started playing the piano, I'll be like, uh, you know, it, it, it's really hard to do something that needs your body to do it again. So let's do it a couple more times. So two, three, four. Can, 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 can. You're all the right notes. Can. Good. And then can can. Can you do it in the context of the of the song? Hold your head as high as you can. Trust it. Hold your head as uh, hold your head as high as you can. That's it. Is that as yeah. fast as you wanted? Uh, it's, I think it's a little bit faster. Mm. Don't be scared of it. Hold your head as high as you can. Good. Uh, uh, one more time. Hold your head as high as you can. Good. Keep on that ah. That's the one we used in there. That worked really well on your voice. Yeah. So try and stay on there. So you're not changing the vowel. You're just changing the notes. Okay. Let's try that. Hold your head as high as you can. Nice. Yeah. Good. And then you just have to practice it over and over again. And then you have to, um, basically, the way we learn new things is first, it, y you don't know what you don't know. Like if you listen to yourself a few years back, you just go, oh, didn't realize I did that, right? And then you learn the stuff and you understand the stuff that you don't know. And sometimes that can be really uncomfortable because you, all of a sudden you're aware, you might have started doing the riff can, and you're kind of just approximating it. And then eventually you realize that, no, I need to make this accurate and slowing it down, finding out exactly what the notes are, it's the best way of doing that because you're helping create this muscle memory and the more time you do it, the more natural it feels. And then essentially, now you have it in your bank. You can have this little bank of, and you might use it in a different song. You might go, okay, I've got this other song I'll use. Can, because I know my voice can do that. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Good. Right, so in short, what we've been doing over the last kind of best part of half an hour is preparing our voice to sing. So. We did some semi-occluded exercises, which is the balancing out of the airflow with the vocal fold uh, wave. And then we did some more things, including the articulators and everything, or diction if you want. Um, obviously, the thing with warm-ups, just as it is with warm-ups if we're going to do exercise or dance, is that you shape the actual exercises to fit what it is that you're going into doing. So with Jana we were doing the, the riff, so it was basically going into accuracy of pitching, whilst with Tristan we're working on the, the bridge control between the lower bit of the voice, uh, uh, some of you will know as chest voice um, or thick fold, uh, and then going into the higher part of the voice and maintaining tone uh, without tension. So obviously I know their voices a little bit better than you do. So any questions about particular things and, and what it is that you're working on, we can talk about in the Q&A. But it's always great after a warm up to then go into application of technique because you could be the best person at doing exercises. But again, that's not really singing. So we have to uh, do some application of technique and. Um, you know, if we're gonna, I know both of these guys from choir as well. So, um, if I was going into doing a choir session, I might go with a round, which will also warm up our ear while we're singing something in harmony. So, we're gonna do a quick round at the end of it, and that helps us kind of shape into. So, we're gonna use the articulators, but also our voices should be a bit more warm by now. Um, and we do the Bella Mama. Do you remember that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. so um, Essentially, we'll do it a couple of times just together and you can learn it as well. And this one can actually be in eight parts, so you could start at loads of different places. Uh, but we're just going to do it in three parts because we're only three people. So uh, it's quite a simple one. It goes... Bella mama, bella mama, yeah. And it's 
call mom, but actually in some languages it could be beautiful mom, so you can decide. Belle mama, belle mama, yeah. It's the second one, so the first one was belle mama, belle mama, yeah. Belle mama, belle mama, yeah. Belle mama, belle mama, belle mama, belle mama. And then it ends the same way as it started with a Bell mama, bell mama, yay. So we do the whole thing in the right cell. It's a good key for both of you? Thanks. Okay, it works. So. Yeah. We'll try it. If not, we'll raise it a yeah. bit. That's what I talked about earlier with voices being of different. Uh, two, three, four. Bell mama, bell mama, yay. Bella mama, bella mama, yeah. Bella mama, bella mama, bella mama, bella mama, bella mama, bella mama, yeah. And that's the whole thing. And a round or a cannon, if you want, means that we're all going to come in at different places. And I said this one could be in eight different parts because it's kind of got a call and response. So if you could start it mm -hmm. and you come in with a response and then I'll come in later. So it'll be like, Bella Mama, Bella Mama, Bella Mama. Okay. Is it all right key yeah. for you? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Okay. So you can hear that it sounds lower. And it feels quite low, but it's okay. We're singing the same pitch, but it, it sounds lower. Yeah. <laughs> I think we could probably... If we go here, Bella Mama, because now we're more warm, we can lift it a bit. So we'll go Bella Mama, Bella Mama. Which then for us, which means that we're coming up for the female voice, up towards kind of a passaggio bridge. We might want to make sure that we don't force it and just allow it. So we're expecting it, not directing it. That uh, means that we're following our natural instincts, which we built up through loads and loads of training. That's how natural in instincts happen. So, Bella Mama, two, three, four. Bella Mama, Bella Mama, yeah. Bella Mama, Bella Mama, yeah. Bella Mama, Bella Mama, Bella Mama, yeah. Bella Mama, Bella Mama, Bella Mama, Bella Mama, It was a natural good ending there. <laughs> <laughs> well done, guys. Yeah, so that can be a bit of a fun. You could uh, learn it and join the choir if you want as well. But yeah, um, let's say some questions for you. So the main reason for warming up is that uh, we're just preparing the voice. And then um, there's exercising, and that is to change things in our voices that either is harmful for us or just doesn't sound like we wanted to do in here or in here. So. Um, that's essentially what warm-ups and exercises are all about. So taking care of our voice so we don't have to cancel gigs and that we can do exactly what it is that we want and make the sounds that we want to do. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Um, and I think you, they're going to be part of the Q&A as well. So any questions that you have, just send them in. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the live Q&A um, with myself, Kaya, and also Jana and Tristan, who was on the workshop video as well. We've got some fantastic questions and we can take quite a few, so do keep them coming in, we'll find out more. And uh, the first one is, what do you recommend would be a good exercise to extend the range of your voice? So that depends why, well, what your voice is doing. If your voice, if you want your voice to go higher and you tend to kind of have a really airy voice on the top, but really powerful voice at the bottom, that might mean that you are trying to bring the bottom voice up too much. So the best thing to do then is practice starting up high and bringing that down, um, creating more power into your higher range. Um, if it's the opposite and you have less power at the bottom um, than you have on top, then it might be the 
a, a different kind of set of muscles and you need to find more resonance in the in the lower end so you could specify which one is particularly for you uh, but generally those um, semi occluded vocal tract exercises which is all those resistance the and the and all those kind of things are great for extending your range uh, the important thing here is to not think about what it sound like because you're doing sit-ups or plie so you're not dancing or or uh, playing football so it's it's the muscles behind all the activities that you're working um, not the not the actual activity and choreography as such of the activity that would be the song um, do you have any, have you been working on extending your range at all? Um, not, not really. Not it's not your first point. It's yeah, more it's about the riffing. Yeah. yeah. How about you? Yeah, I've been working on it quite uh, quite a lot. Um, I've been mostly actually like using semi-included exercises, Kaya was just suggesting, because it's quite easy to go with them, because like you just don't have to use the acoustics for it. So like you don't have to use actual vowels. It's just basically stuff like that and it kind of really helps me to go like for a wider range with that right and actually that's quite connected to another question we got about um singing above your break uh without sounding um awful or a, a tr smooth transition uh, that cuts out and also how to increase your chest voice range so there's a lot of people who have these similar transition and you might have heard of things like the break or bridging or passaggio um, and there are different things that could make each of these things work but generally to increase your chest voice and again chest voice is can be many a things depending on who's who's talking but if we're talking about that full voice resonance then um building strength into your head voice and mixing that into your chest voice from above is often a very good approach other things could be to reduce airflow um up high you could try and sing it if you can make something on like a nay 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 or a or a bow or a mum or something that you've been doing with your singing teacher or or that you've kind of can do a somewhere then maybe start working from there rather than try and work yourself up to it because often then we add loads of extra strain and extra muscles that aren't necessarily um, involved so um, let's see if there's anything of yeah Awful again depends what you mean because some of the sometimes when something cuts out you might get a beautiful kind of ah uh, thing that uh, you know Dido has made an entire career of so it de just depends what happens do you go why does it sound awful does it is it just because you don't like the sound of it is it because it goes out of tune is it because you're losing tone um, if you want to specify we can add some more things about that as well. Oh, the next one. How often would you recommend practicing and for how long? M often and short, deliberate practice is better for creating muscle memory than long, um, long practices that is kind of more singing. If it sounds good all the way through, you're probably not doing deliberate practice, you're just singing. So uh, it kind of has to start sounding. I don't know, well, we didn't get all the way. We had a, a quick workshop with each one of you. But it should start with something that you don't know how to do. Because if not, you're not actually trying to improve. So the best thing things to bring to a singing teacher is the, the things that you wish you could do or the, wish you can, uh, the things that you can almost do. And then you work on that and improve it. And then eventually the muscle memory comes in and um, and you can do it to a higher level uh, how often uh, there's um if some of those of you have heard of the suzuki method um, they say practice on the days that you eat and that is not encouraging you not to eat but to um basically practice every day uh, but short and often and don't strain yourself don't don't tire yourself out if you are getting tired afterwards and that's actually leading into another one of these mm -hmm. questions if you feel strained when you've been singing a couple of songs then there's probably something going on however it could just be that you are staying too long in one coordination so with anything you wouldn't necessarily well 
if you were doing any coordination and it could be something really simple like i'm sure you've you've tried to shoot um, um a concert or or a film or something and you hold your camera up for a while it's not a difficult activity but when you do it for four minutes you can really feel it and it's the same thing with a song if everything is the similar kind of range similar dynamic then eventually your muscles will tire out um, and then that could eventually lead to strain so dynamics and a variety of of range is really helpful for for that but uh, something how, how often do you guys practice um well i mean like it depends um but i try to do it like i try to do it like really often um like i would say like usually during the week actually like every day like i would say like twice but like for short like for a short like amount of time maybe like up to 20 minutes can be quite good and that actually twice a day if you, if i'm feeling good and if i kind of feel like i'm doing my exercises correctly because then i just feel like there's a muscle memory growing and it's kind of working um, did you always were you always able to feel that muscle memory because that no, might be something no, that's a bit alien for people no, obviously not, not feeling but like it's just well I mean like I sort of feel like when I'm doing exercises right um, you kind of it feels nice it feels everything feels balanced you're like looking for consistency also in tone and stuff and when all of these kind of things are just matching um, I just feel like um, it's g g going good and then I just think okay I can go on to next exercises and like challenge me even more and yeah it's yeah, good. it's a good point, the uh, one with consistency of uh, tone, uh, consistency of dynamics um, and feel, and also accuracy of pitch. They are good things to look out for when to know whether you're in this kind of balanced uh, vocal production. And when we talk about that, we're talking about the really, really healthy uh, place to sing. And when you take care of your voice, that is one of them. And that's another question here, uh, which is a great question. How do you take care of your voice? Well, one of them is to make sure that your voice is capable of doing the stuff that you want it to do. Uh, also, water, fantastic. <laughs> it hydrates the voice. And if you ever like feel like you have to kind of <clears throat> clear your voice or you, you're coughing or um, doing things like that, then um, there might be something health going on, or you could be dehydrated. So if you're drinking a lot of cafe or other things, uh, cof caf caffeine, <laughs> it's like coffee and caffeine <laughs> in one cafe. Um, if you're doing a lot of dehydrating things, then your body has a tendency to kind of try to protect you by putting a layer of this is very disgusting, but phlegm. And you might be trying to want to get this up. So that's a w good way of knowing or something could be going on um, health-wise. So if um, a good way of taking care of your voice is to make sure that you take care of your health, you eat balanced, and again, that depends what your body calls for. Mm -hmm. Any special tips from you? Um, well, I, was, I always used to think that when I practiced um, for my voice to hurt and get tired, that was normal. And then when I came to ACM and I spoke to loads of tutors and I took advantage of all the tutorials, um, I've actually taken a lot home with me. And when I'm practicing things, I like to practice about half an hour a day. But as far as warming up goes, I do that like on the way to lessons, like even on the way to uni, even with the straw. Um, so I'm, I'm constantly doing that. but. And this, the straw is good for that because you can't really hear it. So like for me, who still gig, um, I use it to warm up before the gigs because I can kind of do it while the, the band before is on or while I'm setting up. And, and you don't have to kind of make a big number of doing la la la's in the, mm. in the bathroom or something like that if you, or, or in dressing rooms. You, you can kind of get set quite quickly. Uh, warming up is slightly different to exercising your voice, which is the building your range and, and kind of adding uh, more power or more stamina or, um, did I say range? Yeah, <laughs> of more <laughs> dynamics is another one, uh, or getting the, the pitch really sorted. So uh, that is more the stuff you do in the rehearsal room. When you're on stage or when you're uh, performing, or, when, or s assessments as well, let's face it, it's gonna be, a, 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 everything coming up here <laughs> soon um, you shouldn't be thinking to m about technique you should think about communicating that song across to to the the people and you know y it's too late to be doing anything building your voice and some of the best performances doesn't necessarily have a perfect vocal technique technical performance but it just hits you here so it's important to to 
think about this is something you do in the practice room. It's not the be all and end all of good singing. You know, some of my favorite singers, so people like Damien Rice or even Bob Dylan, a fantastic songwriter. It's not necessarily somebody I would have said he's got fantastic technique. So it's a good point. Um, we're going to go to more questions. Mm -hmm. So increase the chest voice range without straining and sounding flat on the high note. Another great question kind of related to um, the passaggi and bridging. The semi-occluded vocal tract exercises are fantastic for that and it can help you to start on top going down potentially. If you know the arpeggio which is the na 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 but you might go na try and start straight on the note uh, but on the can be a good exercise for that. Um, other things, the straw and the mm, all of those kind of things. And then slowing things down. Everything else we learn uh, with our body, we kind of slow down. You don't start learning a dance routine by going straight up to full speed. You start by learning the steps individually and then gradually um uh, as you become a better dancer, you can pick up co choreography quicker because your body is, is conditioned to do it. And it's exactly the same. Um, yeah, what else are we doing? So that was the... Hi, Jasmine, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest problem is you can't sing over break without it sounding awful. So again, it's the same same thing. It, it is all about balancing that top range, which might sound a bit small. So if you can practice singing in like a thin voice up there, oh, small voice first, and then gradually build in more power, then um, you you can kind of gradually bring more power and, and stamina and tone in there as well. Because the tone bit is not from down there and the air, it's from the vowels and, and, and um, your vocal tract, which is everything above vocal four level. Hmm. Some great questions. Well done, guys. If if anything comes up afterwards and you see this, maybe you see the video uh, um, again when we post it, and hopefully by that point you should have perfect audio and video link as well. Um, then, and any question comes up, then do post them, and we'll come back and, and check them out as well. Uh, technique to gain more vocal power. Okay, so there is singing more, so that you build up your overall singing ability but it could also be about reducing airflow if it's too airy you might want to reduce the airflow and that could be with hard consonants and um, sometimes it could be helpful to try and bring these muscles uh, that help get the vocal folds together by using these hard consonants but with a wide vowel because if I do it sounds much louder if I do the ah, even though I wasn't actually singing any louder, it just acoustically louder. The other exercise that's great for building dynamic power um, is the method of the voce, where you start really quietly. And That one I was going louder with more compression, so, so pardon if that's distorted in your head. Um, <laughs> it was on purpose. Um, and then breathing exercises. Those straw things that are all um, breathing exercises. So they kind of help with both the dynamic and the power and all of those things. Still, uh, great. I have trouble singing in front of crowds and people. Have you got any tips for dealing with pressure? Yes, we work quite a bit with this, although it's easier to do that in a one-to-one. -one. But the big one is get out there and dare to do it because everybody kind of feels it when you start. It's it's terrifying. And I don't know if you, did you feel no n nervous about doing this today? Yeah, um, I'd like to elaborate that on that a little bit. Um, it, start, it does start with within from within and I think a big thing that I've learned at ACM is that I'm here because I am here to learn and I do have parts of me that are good enough to do what I do and that's what you have to think about when you're singing and part of the pressure comes from that because everyone's worried about how um, how they're perceived by other people but you really just need to think about why you, you want to study at ACM and people here really show you 
how to think that way and put you on the right path. So I do feel like you'd really benefit from the tutor's advice at ACM if you come and study. It's um, it's a lot like, uh, perf- so I, I like using a lot of sports psychology in this because um, they're so much, they prepare for the task ahead and how can you prepare yourself for the task ahead and you kind of learn how to lock everything else out so that it's all about you and the song, uh, whether it's your own song or whether it's a song that you, you're learning for um, a cover or something else. And, and if you can kind of stay true to the artistry and the performance, then you don't feel so aware of yourself singing because it's kind of not about you as the individual. It's about the song and your role for that song. But it does become easy. If you feel prepared, it's a big one as well. Do you get nervous? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, in the past and sometimes as well, like, especially when, like, some assessments are coming up and stuff. But um, I would say, like, yeah, I mean, I mean, like, it depends. So, like, whenever I feel prepared, I'm sort of, like, in a good mood for actually, like, performing. And I'm kind of totally, I would say, like, ready for it. Um, also, I would say, like, the most important thing is that that one... Like enjoys like to perform and do that. I think it's about like enjoying that what you do, singing and performing. That's or, like what you're here at ACM, for instance, or like that's what you're doing on stage. And I think that's always the main thing you should be thinking about when you're doing or like when you're like delivering a performance. That's what I think. Yeah. So preparation, serving the song. Uh, for some people, it, it helps not to think about the audience altogether, but think about if this was a song you were performing like on the stage just to someone else, then you can um, and try and put yourself into that sort of visualization and those kind of things. But that's a, it's a big subject. Maybe we should do another live stream on, on that entirely. Mm-hmm. It's a great... Oh, mm-hmm. there's another one coming up, by the way, with Dave Cronin, which to date I have down here, so I can look that up for you. Um it's on the 23rd of February, and he's a music business whiz, so you don't miss that. Um, we've got that. So f- some great questions uh, here. What can you do to, uh, what can a girl do when um, you're on your period to make your voice sound more at ease? That is a complex thing because everything affects the voice, hormones and how you feel and all that. And I think I don't think the bass players or the drummers might have to think as much on these things. Yes, you might be a bit tired or, or feel a bit iffy if you've been ill or if you're in certain times of the month. But um, for singers, it does make things swell up and, and it, it does make it harder to sing. And actually in the opera world, it's often common to move away from... Um, uh, really important performances if you know that's going to happen. Pregnancy is another big one. However, if your vocal technique is really strong, then um, you should be able to stay connected and, and be able to still perform healthily in most situations. But you might want to stay away from the most strenuous of exercise. Um, and if you're really feeling it, then potentially it's uh, looking at um, not singing the most challenging material at that time. Um, never take painkillers and then do it though, because then you don't know if you've done any damage. So that's not because I enjoy people being in pain, but just because an athlete would never take painkiller before doing their thing. So, um, oh, that's a good one. What can you do if you have a gig the next day and you're losing your voice or getting ill? From Kyla, age 11, that almost my name. Um, <laughs> If it's pain, it's kind of your body telling you not to do it. And that is really frustrating. Have you had your voice go before an important thing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. If it's pain, it's sensible not to sing. However, if you're just feeling like your body isn't doing exactly what you want it to do, it could be a case of voice rest for a couple of days before. Um, Generally... If we feel like the voice isn't working quite well, if you already know the song and you're kind of like trying to make it work more, you might delay that if you're tired. So making sure you get a good night's sleep, you might be trying to do some steam inhalation, um, not too hot though, so you get any burns, but um, it might help to hydrate. Um, ginger, lemon and honey, if it is and bacterial, a lot of people swear by that, but 
Um, nothing comes past the vocal folds apart from air and steam because you know you don't really don't want anything to go past your vocal fold because the main thing that the vocal fold is doing is to stop things from getting down into your lungs you don't want any water or ginger down there but <laughs> it could help if there are um, some bacteria around it and it's proven that ginger has some antibacterial effect we're getting into medical side yeah. here um, BVA have some great uh, advice for people about how to take care of yours that's the British Voice Association if you google that um, and resources there's loads of things you can download um, how do you sing with power or rasp for genre uh, genres such as heavy metal that depends <laughs> so there are different types of rasps and this distortion what that essentially is is um it is um, another frequency happening alongside the main fundamental frequency you see how this could take a little bit longer to talk about so what i'm going to say is um if you can make certain like <laughs> not including this and see if you can go from there and include you might um it might be one way it might be somebody actually singing raspy from down in the throat but there's so many different things that can actually distort and some of them are a little bit dangerous uh, some people use to kind of fry to come into it and then using microphones and all sort of it's a longer thing i um yeah it's a longer thing but in short, if your voice is balanced, it can deal with more vocal naughtiness, but distortion is generally not in the balanced side of things. So um, it's important to make sure that you're not feeling pain um, and kind of do it from an acoustic point of view rather than from wrecking your voice. Well, if you want to keep doing it for a while anyway. Um, there's so many interesting questions here. Great. Um, am I better on technique or on performance? Ooh, you know what? I started out as a performance coach, a vocal coach, and that was more important for me. And music is more important for me as an artist, as a as a listener. However, I started learning the technique bits so that I could help the students get across what they wanted to say in their hearts and in their heads. Uh, so I eventually became, and also because I came from a bit of a sports science background, I went to sports college, so I kind of got was interested in what was going on inside the, um, in, in the body to make sure that that could match what was going inside the mind, if that makes sense. So the short one, I don't know if I, you can answer that, but what am I better at, technique or performance? <laughs> oh, I mean, I've seen you <laughs> cringe. I, I've seen you perform quite a few times. I think, um. I think, because you were the science behind it and everything, like you, you just you're amazing because you have so many tools. Uh, that I have you not use paid her. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's. Um, um, I think. I. Th I think it's. It, you could sing. You could do a great performance without being a great technical singer you could do a great technical performance without being a good singer, but I would be more moved by the first than by the second, because mm. um, I think it's about instinct. However, when the two comes together, that's when you kind of go, whoa, how are they doing that? And how how am I not? If I go to a concert and I don't have to think about what, what technical mistakes they've made or whether they're hurting themselves, then I'm completely blown away. Yes, ooh, mm. that's couple more now and then um we have to go because the 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 stream is coming to an end i hope you've really enjoyed it and um, if you want to get in touch with our admissions teams and uh, myself and any of the students you can email us in um and we'll try and answer as much as we can let's get a last a few Ooh, so we've done that one we've done that one um it squeaks or gets whiny and i lose control so it goes out of the key uh, i'm assuming that will be up higher uh, that's typically where that happens um those woofy thing that we did in the in that they're good for really good. trying to get out of the kind of whiny because often that means you've got the right frequency you, you're making the right note it's just that the coordination isn't there so if you try and make the right note even just in like a kind of hardly any sound and then working your way from there 
Um, that might be a good one, but again, depends what it is that you do. How long do you recommend warming up before a gig? That depends what kind of material you're doing, depends what your voice is doing, <laughs> and it depends how you're feeling on the day. Uh, on a good day, you know, 10, 15 minutes of straw and semi-occluded might do it for me. If I'm feeling a bit tired and stressed, I might have to do a full, well, actually I cracked, I might do a full, stretch routine to free up the muscles around my breathing apparatus uh, i might be a bit asthmatic because i've suffered with a bit of that so that would be a much much longer uh on average i probably say 15 to half an hour for warm-up then exercises depends what you're practicing um what could happen if you don't warm up enough depends what you're singing and what your voice is doing and and if you're making any mistakes um, it's it's very good practice to ensure that your voice is ready in the same way as you would never start a dance class with the splits you will start with stretches and, and, and preparing your body but if you're singing happy birthday you don't have to run out to the bathroom and do a warm up first um, so it's, it's all about how much you're planning to push your vocal instrument uh, is there it? Is there a technique when you jump to a higher scale in a song? Oh, you're talking about modulations or when you are jumping up and kind of sing it higher later on? I'm not sure, but I'll say one about each one of those. Modulation is all about training your ear. And that's actually another set of skills um, of just musicianship and listening. You can get some apps and practice uh, perfect pitch or, or practice relative pitch at least. Um, perfect pitch is generally more kind of innate but um, you can practice singing more in tune and recognizing higher and then um, you could practice interval so you know what's the interval and that interval is the space between notes so you know which one you're heading up or down to that's I think for me the most effective any tips for modulations um just knowing the knowing the chords really, and like yep. I said, it, like you said, ear training and things like that. Mm. It's quite helpful. Sit yeah. down at a piano; that helps. Work out the notes on the piano so that you know what they sound like independently, and then both for singing in harmony and for singing, um, and for singing the um, the modulations and kind of strange movement, then listening to the chords and understanding where you fit within that um, is really helpful. Hope you enjoyed everything, and we are going to keep a little eye on it. We've got to let let the technical team, uh, uh, production team behind this video is sitting over there. Let them go home at some point. And mm. but we hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, we did. Did you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I enjoyed it, and uh, hopefully you got something out of it. Uh, even though, as we said, it all depends on what your goal is, and. Um, I think one of my favorite parts of teaching is to look for the student's goal and finding out what that is. So um, you can call our admissions team on 01483 500 841 if you're looking to study here or visit the website on um, www.acm.ac.uk slash open hyphen days or the general website uh, to for more resources. Yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs>